Hello to you all and welcome to Improvates and Spacecom's Communication Africa 2021 conference. Improvate is a platform for creating long-lasting connections, enabling change makers in technology and decision makers in government. To make progress through innovation, Improvate is all about finding solutions and sparking collaborations that improve the quality of life for people around the world. Spacecom is an international communication service provider and the owners of the Amos satellite fleet. Spacecom's most recent satellite, the Amos 17, is the most advanced satellite available now for Africa. Today we will be discussing the opportunities for development in African nations and dive into new technologies and satellite-based communication solutions, aiming to enable governments to extend their service reach, drive growth, and advance the African nations in all aspects of life. Joining us today from the United Kingdom is our keynote speaker, Tony Blair. He served as United Kingdom Prime Minister from 1997 until 2007, and today is the founder and chair of the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. Also with us today here in the studio in Tel Aviv is Mrs. Irina Nevzlin, Improvate founder and chair, and our partner in this conference, Mr. Dan Zaychek, Spacecom CEO, former Israeli Minister of Communication, Mr. Yoaz Hendel, and Job D. Massima, Tanzanian ambassador to Israel. We will be joined today with several African officials from nine different countries. Mali, South Sudan, Gabon Libreville, Ghana, the Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, and Sierra Leone. Here with us in our first panel is Mr. Hamadoun Toure, Minister of Communication of Mali, Minister of Communication of Niger, Mr. Michael McQuaid Loeth, Minister of Information, Communication, Technology and Postal Services in the Republic of South Sudan, and Ms. Mamadi Gobek Kamara, Deputy Minister of Information and Communication from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Also in this broadcast is Aviv Ronai, VP of Marketing and Product at Novelsat, Ari Snai, Head of international finance from Bank Laomi and Mr. Yariv Cohen, CEO of Ignite Power. As always, watching along with us are representatives of investment funds from around the world who are looking to invest in Israeli innovation. Today, more than ever, always on high quality communications are a fundamental requirement for any modern society and economy. Satellite communication enables a wide range of government services like border supervision, post services, and ID issuing through vital services like education, health, employment, and security. When it comes to the deployment of communication infrastructure that connects all areas, urban and rural, to the economic and social centers of the country, sat satellite stands out as the most reliable enabling infrastructure, and today also as a very cost-effective one. Spacecom is an international communication service provider that specializes in satellite communication and the proprietary owner and operator of the known Amos satellite fleet. Its recent addition, the Amos 17, is an advanced, fully digital, and high-throughput satellite designed specifically for Africa's unique and growing needs. Operating since 1992, the company has built a strong standing as an innovator in its field and serves as a service to partner its customers, providing satellite connectivity services, managed services, professional services, and turnkey solution. Let's take a look. Like breathing, connectivity is a basic human need. That's exactly why the UN has declared internet connection a basic human right. Especially in times like these, connection is what makes us grow. It gives us meaning and lets us be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Part of a nation. Spacecom is proud to be a part of the effort to empower African nations to connect and very proud to present Digital Community Platform, or DCP, a practical and sustainable solution to your country's digital transformation plans, including remote and less accessible regions. Combining connectivity, Wi-Fi, local cloud, content, and OTT in a simple and innovative way. Using Spacecom's brand new and advanced satellite AMOS 17, specifically designed for Africa's needs, DCP provides a turnkey solution, which enables a complete arsenal of services. Government services, health, education, commerce and payments, agriculture, and of course, 
for use and entertainment. DCP, Digital Community Platform. Scalable, sustainable, flexible. Available now for rapid deployment. And you can check out Spacecom's website for more information. All right, starting us off here in the studio today is Improvate's founder and chair, Irina Nevslin. Among her many achievements, Irina is also an entrepreneur and author who recently published the book, The Impact of Identity, The Power of Knowing Who You Are. Irina, thank you so much for joining us today. So what is Improvate's vision in general? First of all, thank you very much. And it's, we were just discussing that it's our fifth conference you know, in less than three months, and I'm very excited. And I think we have, we have been in touch with more than 25 countries, if I'm not mistaken, over the last three months. So I'm very happy that even in the COVID time, we're actually managed to stay in touch and, and uh, uh, talk. Absolutely. The reason we created Improvate is quite simple. There is, I think, if you look around this table, I'm sure, and some people I know better, some, some less, but I know that there's, there's certain mindset which, um, which is the um, mindset of taking responsibility and of win-win. What I mean is that if we have, you have two parties coming together and uh, deciding to do some project, if you have a mentality that both parties should benefit and if you understand that this, this is the way it's going to create a lasting change, then you have a much more opportunity to get to much bigger results. And so this mindset, win-win, we can see that now with COVID rollout, for example, where we see pharma companies obviously want to make money and make people healthier, governments which have to make sure that uh, people get health services, and the citizens which benefit from all of that. This is a classic win-win-win. So we've created Improvate to make sure that this approach works. It's a platform to make it happen. Irina, communication is clearly the basis for everything. How do you see the Israeli satellite, the Amos 17, contributing to the development of advancing African nations? Look, I think that we've, we've just seen it in a, in a video, but I'll tell you, we, the, the opportunities that Amos 17 represents compared to the regular uh, grid, the old school grid, for countries with large space lands are enormous, and Spacecom obviously is leading this uh, transformation. Now, this connectivity allows communication, and with communication comes an opportunity. Now, we at Improvate, our whole, you ask what the vision is, the vision is to make sure that the opportunity turns into reality, because there are a lot of opportunities, not all of them get ultimately to become reality. And the reality is that you can get any child, any person in the most of the farthest rural area in Africa, in school, it's in, in small village, you can get them access to internet. And I think that world is a totally new opportunity that opens to those people which never had the chance, you know, to experience all that. And right. we are very happy to be part of that revolution. Wonderful. Irina Nevzlin, thank you so much for that. Thank you. All right, now it's time to move to our special guest today, Right Honorable Tony Blair. It's great to have you again taking part in another Improvate International Conference. You personally and the Tony Blair Institute are heavily invested in improving life and advancing Africa in all areas. It is an honor to have you with us today. So how do you see the role of technology and innovation in making globalization accessible to all? Globalization's a, a fact, and even with, with COVID and some of the political reactions against globalization, the world's gonna carry on integrating. And technology's got a huge part to play. It's got a part to play because it's partly driving this globalization. But it's also because if you want globalization to work for people, You've got to learn how to master the technology, harness it, and use it for, for the good of the people. And the technology revolution, it's the single biggest change that's going on in the world today. Um, and it's going to transform and is transforming everything, the way we live, the way we work, the way we think, the way we communicate and interact with each other. So to make globalization work, you've got to make technology work for people. Well, Improvate is all about finding solutions and sparking collaborations between governments and tech companies in order to improve the quality of life for people around the world. How do you see Improvate's contribution toward achieving this vision? One of the biggest challenges um, for, for governments and countries, particularly in the Africa context, is you, you can see these technology developments happening around the world. And... Many of the people inventing the technologies and developing them are people who are passionately interested in operating in different parts of the world and often particularly in Africa. But the challenge is how you, how you link 
those with the ideas with the people on the ground who can help make them happen in continents like Africa. So in, in the African context, you have countries that could really use technology um, for financial payments, for health, for education, um, for issues to do with uh, the security of the citizen, for the efficiency of government, the development, for example, of biometric identity, which I'm sure will, will happen across the continent of Africa eventually. But many of the people developing the best technologies are outside of Africa. So the question is, therefore, how do you link the two? And that's where Improvate comes in, because it, it's because of its connectivity, it's able to put together the change makers with the policy makers and with the people on the ground who can help make it happen. And this will also, by the way, help in the development of Africa's own technology sector, because over the last five or six years, Africa itself has started to develop some really exciting um, technology companies. Uh, you will find today venture capital from the West investing in Africa in a way which a decade ago would just never have been on the cards. And again, all of it requires facilitation and connecting. And this is where Improvate comes in and does it so well. Mr. Blair, what are the major challenges in Africa today as you see them? So the 21st century is going to see Africa take its proper place in the world. But right now, Africa is in a state of transition. So it has a population growing faster than any other part of the world. The population of Africa over the next decades will double, become a continent of over 2 billion people. Its middle class is set to double just in the next five years. And Africa faces challenges of development and poverty, access to electricity and therefore to technology, and of course, challenges of governance. Now, my institute works particularly on the governance side. In my view, the countries that are well governed today are the ones that succeed, because everything else is mobile, but your government's not. So if your government is operating effectively and well and honestly, you can succeed in today's world. If it's not, then it's much harder. So the challenges of Africa are multiple, but one of the things that's important for the world to realize is that you just take the issue of climate change, for example. A whole lot of international discussion, quite rightly, about how we accelerate our development of the measures to combat climate change. But without involving the continent of Africa, as it develops and as it needs access to electricity, to travel, to communication, without binding in Africa to this global picture, we're never going to succeed. So Africa is important in its own right, for its own people, but it's also important for the world. And the challenges of Africa are multiple, but I am optimistic about it. If you look at Africa today and compare it with Africa, let's say when I first came to office, 25 years ago in the UK, Africa's come a long, long way. It's got better quality of leadership, better qualities of business. Its social links are much, much more developed. And you know, as we were saying earlier, in the technology sector, for example, in Africa today is really coming on. So Africa's at a very, very exciting moment of development and smart countries are investing in Africa today. Well, satellite communication enables communication without ground infrastructure. How do you see the advantages of satellite communication in Africa to meet these challenges that you have just mentioned? So one of the biggest challenges that Africa has is, is to overcome its natural disadvantages. And its natural disadvantages are around, for example, the size of the continent, the fact that many rural communities are very isolated, you know, sometimes hundreds of miles from nearest centers of, of um, urban activity. And therefore, what that means is that to try and, for example, hook up the electricity grid to some of these remote areas is incredibly difficult. Now, fortunately, technology comes to our assistance here. So a lot of um, African villages are now using off-grid or mini-grid electricity facilities and satellite 
technology gives us again a huge opportunity to bridge some of those land divides. So I think that properly deployed satellite communication can be absolutely transformative for Africa and it can allow it to leapfrog a whole generation of old technology and get to new technology. So this is incredibly exciting. And I think that there will be enormous interest in Africa in how this satellite technology can help um, with connectivity and communication. And it's an interesting parallel with the technology around uh, solar, because going back 10 years, when people like myself were first talking about bringing um, solar power to remote African communities, frankly, people were pretty skeptical. They thought that it wasn't really going to be possible to do. At that time, the economics of solar power weren't so great either. But this is what happens with technology. 10 years on, the costs have come down, the technology's advanced, and now this is very possible for remote Africa villages. So I think satellite technology is one of the most exciting areas and one of the areas where if there, there is the right interaction between satellite companies and African countries and their governments, this can really advance things. Mr. Blair, can you describe for us how you see the importance of this conference in exposing African nations to the opportunities in advanced satellite communication? One of the problems when, when you're in government is you're busy with a whole lot of things during your, <clears throat> your working day and you're, you're dealing with crises and scandals and events that are unexpected or even expected. <clears throat> and you're dealing with the day-to-day -day politics and business of government. And so sometimes one of the problems is that you, you don't have the time to step back from the, the daily grind of things and look at what are the opportunities that if you're aware of them, you can use to your advantage. And so the advantage of a conference like this is by, by bringing together people who are developing new ideas with policymakers, the policymakers can get some sight of the exciting opportunities that technology can bring. And one of the passions of my institute is to try and bring these change makers and policy makers together in a better dialogue. And the Improvate Conference is a, you know, it's a great way of making those connections. Because, you know, when you think about the opportunities to transform, for example, healthcare and education, just take those two areas alone. If you've got the right me means of communication, there's no point in many of these developing countries, particularly in the continent of Africa, going through building all the legacy systems of countries in the West. Instead, they can use technology to bypass a lot of those legacy systems and develop the most up-to-date forms of communication, allowing you to do, for example, remote healthcare and education to a much higher standard and better degree than, than any you know, than any basic and rudimentary school or health system can achieve in the old way. So the advantage of a conference like this is it just, it helps those policymakers understand how the world's changing and how with a bit of vision and imagination and, and focus, they can access, the, access those changes for the benefit of their country and their people. All right, Mr. Tony Blair, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much indeed for having me at the Improvate Conference. It's a great pleasure to be with you all and good luck to everyone participating. I think this conference is a great idea and I'm sure it'll be very successful. Thank you all. All right, let's say hello again to Zan Zajcek, the CEO of Spacecom. Hey, Dan, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Lauren. So Spacecom is well known for being uh, professionally practical and innovative. Can you please share with us a revolutionary service Spacecom is already rolling out in Africa um, for us in Spacecom, we, we understood, as uh, also was mentioned by Mr. Tony Blair, that the challenge is the lack of infrastructure, terrestrial infrastructure in the continent. Um, we see the satellite that we are provide, providing as an enabler for our services that are provided. And uh, one of the most exciting things that we already done is putting a clinic in uh, Mozambique that is connected via uh, satellite connectivity using a full suite of medical services uh, that are very unique and uh, newly, uh, uh, now newly developed. 
And all of these services are connected via solar power, so it's really isolated and an off-grid and can be easily deployed in the unconnected uh, territories. Dan, I'd like you to address the challenges and opportunities Africa is now facing, as we just heard from Tony Blair, and how satellite communication can meet these challenges. So I think that the three major uh, challenges that we have is first is the terrestrial network, that there is a lack of terrestrial network. Africa is a very big continent and we don't see a connectivity in remote places. We see a very good connectivity in the major cities and in the urban places, but in the semi-urban and the rural places there is a lack of communication. It's not connected to the grid as mentioned before, so we see that there is no electricity. And I think that uh, one of the biggest challenges is also finance. And the opportunities that we see there is, first of all, the young population and the ability to adopt new technologies. We see that uh, in Africa, a lot of new technologies are being adopted much faster than in the West. And we see that this, uh, this puts a very uh, good opportunity moving forward. Um, I think that uh, together, where we come from Israel, so all the technology that we have and all the high tech, now we have much better uh, medical solution and e-learning solution that are being more uh, um, optimized for the electricity side and also from the communication side. And this enable us to, uh, uh, to perform or to introduce those services in Africa based on the satellite that we have. Can you give us your view and maybe some concrete examples? So for me, um, we, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, first of all, we have the clinic that we have in uh, Mozambique. I think it's a great, uh, uh, a, a great example of combining all these uh, three uh, elements, the communication together with the solar power and the high-tech technology, introducing the uh, medical e-health and telemedicine in those places. In addition, we are also cooperating with the e-learning. I think that e-learning is very important, especially in remote locations. It enables you to interact with remote location and introducing in, uh, educational infrastructure to places that it was, uh, didn't enjoy this uh, infrastructure before. Great. Thank you so much for that, Dan. Now, I'd like to invite you to present to us the new digital community platform, the DCP, and generally what Spacecom is all about. Thank you, Lorraine. I'm very excited to be here today. It's a great honor to bring so many respectable people together. My name is Dan Zajcek, and for me, this occasion is a dream come true. After 20 years in the communication sector and 10 years working with Africa, I took over the position of Spacecom CEO last year. And finally, have the opportunity to introduce a game-changing concept in Africa. A game-changing concept that I believe will create significant impact. We call it DCP, Digital Community Platform. As you all know, we live in a connected world, and communication is important than ever. It enables everything. It enables education, it enables proper healthcare services, government services, and also agriculture. Communication is so important that the UN declared as a basic human right just like food and water. Especially now, in COVID-19 era, communication is the way to do business. Communication is the way to learn and to receive medical attention. It is the only way to deal with social isolation, to connect the rural to the urban, for the government to connect, to commute to their nation. As, as, and as the UN said, the pandemic is a wake-up call for all of us. I experienced Africa for, for more than a decade, and now I can safely say Africa is in the best position for the next giant leap. With a young population willing to adopt new technologies, together with a dedicated satellite beam that can cover the entire country, Africa is ready to connect all the rural areas, even those in limited infrastructure in remote regions. It's inspiring to see how Africa has evolved so much in recent years. And now, it is the right time for Africa to take the next step into digital, digital transformation. Through satellite, it is possible to tackle many connectivity challenges with a fast and cost-effective deployment. And here is where Spacecom comes in. Spacecom 
has a fleet of four satellites in orbit and more than 30 years experience providing communication services. Among our clients are governments and global enterprises around the world. We are partner with the UN and we offer turnkey solution for mobile backhaul services and Wi-Fi access. Recently, we have launched our newest satellite, AMOS 17, one of the most advanced satellites in the world, designed especially for Africa. AMOS 17 has joined our fleet of satellites, providing global coverage and communication infrastructure to our partners. Using the unique capabilities of AMOS 17, we offer you NationSat. NationSat is much more than just satellite capacity. It's a dedicated national communication infrastructure exclusive to your country with a national coverage. NationSat enables you to enjoy our new platform, DCP, the Digital Community Platform, which includes application for governments, health, education, commerce, agriculture, and home and determined. Now, let's zoom in and see the impact of the application available through the DCP. In the field of government services, the local government portal includes everything that the government needs in order to govern, from national population registry to homeland security, border control, and much more. And this is just about government services. While using DCP, you can introduce the world's best educational methods to your students and teachers. DCP allows you to provide a high quality educational infrastructure in urban and remote location, online and offline. And what is the most exciting thing about this? You can leverage the best educators and extend their reach, allowing for educational equality nationwide. So we talk about government services, education services, and now, as I said, the DCP has a wide variety of services, including agriculture. Whether it's vital information for the farmers, online training, or even big national program which can create impact and improve the national export and produce. Of course, the DCP also provides the ability to sell and buy online, carry out financial services, and enables online payments. Through Wi-Fi and backhaul connectivity, the DCP provides home use and entertainment services like OTT and television. Now, I would like to share with you something that really makes me proud. The ability to actually impact and improve people's life. Look at the picture. It's from our connected medical clinic that we have established in Mozambique, making crucial medical services accessible right now. We can already offer a full suite of medical services in any location with fast deployment, from a mobile emergency clinic to remote expert consultation, laboratory services, and diagnostics such as ultrasound, ECG, and X-ray. Summing it all up, DCP is scalable, sustainable, and flexible. How flexible? You can pick and choose any application in any location according to your needs and requirements, with the ability to change services along the way. And you know what? The best part about it, it's not just a vision, it's a reality. I invite you all to join our DCP program today. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure to be part of this important event. Thank you so much, Dan, and please come have a seat with us. Okay, let's welcome Mali's Minister of Communication, Mr. Hamadoun Toure. Hello, so great to have you with us today. Yes, great to join you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, strong and stable communication is a key factor in improving government services in health, education, homeland security, basically in everything. Five years from now, how do you see Mali's development and what role does communication take in building its future? First of all, let me thank you for uh, inviting me to join uh, Embro, and uh, let me congratulate Embro uh, and also thank Tony Blair for uh, making the opening remarks. Uh, and uh, I've met uh, Tony, of course, in many occasions uh, in my former capacity as Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union. And uh, I would like to really uh, thank him for his leadership. Uh, I'm also uh, 
a satellite engineer by background. So I, I was very pleased to see the presentation by Dan. And uh, as you know, I have spent uh, most of my career in the satellite industry, working in, in Intelsat in Washington, DC first as well. And at the time I was uh, actually ended up uh, being the group director for Africa and Middle East. So I was covering Israel so, as well. Uh, I, I would like to also let you know that uh, I was a member of uh, the board of Imarsat uh, until uh, my appointment as Minister of Communication and Information and uh, Digital Technology in Mali. So uh, I'm very pleased and very uh, knowledgeable of the challenges that uh, the ICT industry is facing. And uh, I should say that uh, uh, Africa is today ready for business in this field. Having witnessed that uh, as Secretary General of ITU, uh, the missing piece was the legal and regulatory framework, which is uh, uh, totally harmonized today in Africa. Uh, some of the greatest things we want to put in place are the infrastructure, the content development, development of uh, applications and services, and all, also, of course, also uh, capacity building and education. Those are the key pillars of our development program. And Africa is working on those, all those areas uh, in many countries today. Uh, last but not least, the financing and uh, uh, the solution, the local, locally grown solutions are some of the things that we are looking at. And I believe that having been in this industry for over 40 years now, I believe that if you have good projects, you have financing for it. And there are very many bright ideas in this field you need no longer to convince the users for it. Having joined the government, I realized how much I didn't need to convince the Minister of Agriculture. He, he's the one who came to me and said, look here, I need to put uh, e-applications in everything I want to do in agriculture and, uh, and uh, uh, other fields uh, in his area. The Minister of Education and Higher Education we are working together with, from day one, we started working together on making sure that uh, exams are well prepared, well protected, and there, there is a full transparency on it. And we are now putting together a program uh, in which we are trying to embed uh, new fields in the curriculum. Because we know if you don't put things like uh, artificial intelligence, coding, and uh, virtual presence and virtual reality, you don't put those in your education program today, the children will be illiterate tomorrow. So we're working together on all those fields. And of course, uh, some of the greatest challenges are how do you prioritize in a country where there is a uh, security concerns, there are uh, uh, hunger problems, there are education problems, there are health issues, of course, in the middle of COVID, uh, 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 pandemic. Mm -hmm. We want to, to make sure that uh, uh, people uh, use this tool and don't put it in the back burner. So, uh, and I can tell you that uh, having been in this government uh, of transition in Mali, which is uh, uh, have a, a very specific goal of uh, just uh, organizing in the next 18 months uh, a, a free and a, a fair elections. I am, I've been tasked to actually develop a 10-year plan to 2030 ICT development plan that we're putting together. That is very ambitious, I can tell you. Okay, Mr. Toure, thank you so much for your input today. Thank you. Okay, let's say hello to former Israeli Minister of Communication and member of Knesset, Yoaz Handel. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Lauren. I'm happy to be here. So as the former communication minister of Israel, how do you explain the fact that Israel, which is such a small country, has such advanced space and satellite communication services? First of all, I think that Israelis are motivated by a kind of a biblical prophecy to uh, share the light in many aspects. And part of it is how to connect people. Now I'm a politician and now we are in the middle of a, a political campaign and this is a business of separating people. Communications infrastructure is how to connect people. And this is, I think, a part of the idea behind the, the tools, behind the satellites, behind the fibers. 
And uh, when you see, when you check uh, what Israel is uh, facing and what we have done here in the last uh, a few years, uh, we can see how Israel use uh, communications infrastructure to grow and to increase um, our economic uh, situation. Um, we can check the numbers. We are, we are talking about the um, G, uh, GDP of 1.1, uh, which means about uh, 13 uh, billion shekels. We are talking about the growth in the uh, increasing of uh, a labor circle and on and on. And even though that Israel is a such an advanced country, we still have places like in the desert, in the Negev, which uh, we have our limitations in connecting people. Uh, it's uh, more hard to connect people with fibers in the desert. And then you have uh, other options. One of them, and I think the best one, is uh, use a uh, satellite. And uh, so if you see, if you try, if one wants to understand why everything is developing here, it's because we have so, so, ma so many uh, challenges and we have to find solutions and uh, solutions to the desert, solution to the north and solution to other uh, parts of the world and Africa, our friends in Africa, I think in joining part of the ideas that grew here. So with that said, what is your view when it comes to the importance of satellite communication for the fulfillment of government projects and the impact it has on government initiatives in general? So in general, communications infrastructure, including satellites, are part of uh, the ability uh, to give um, people in the world, uh, in everywhere, uh, first of all, opportunity to uh, learn, to, to work, um, to have uh, health uh, treatment uh, from distance. Now, uh, when you check a high-speed internet, for example, which is only one aspect of this issue, uh, can uh, bring people to, uh, to better places, can connect uh, someone from the Galilee to uh, the Silicon Valley and uh, connect someone from Mali or from uh, Zanzibar to uh, Washington or for, to Vienna. And uh, I think it's not only changing the world, it's changing our perspective on globalization, on opportunities and on limitations. And the government has a role to encourage this development. All right, Joas Handel, thank you so much for being here today. We really thank appreciate you. it. Now I want to introduce Mr. Adok Gai, Director General of the National Communication Authority from the Republic of South Sudan. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. So only... Uh, I would like to take this... Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Space Comms and the organizers of this event for giving us the opportunity to attend. Thank you, madam. Of course. Now, only recently, the country has been successful in overcoming many of its challenges, and it seems like you are on the fast track of development. Yet, so many challenges are still ahead. South Sudan is a landlocked country. How does it affect your overall communication strategy? Uh, generally, as a landlocked country with no infrastructure in place of any kind, and having emerged from a very long civil war, I think South Sudan is a uh, a classical case of what a satellite technology can be truly utilized to, to leapfrog connectivity. As a new member states in, the, in this sector and having to have no, with no uh, legacy technology from past communications, we do occupy the unique uh, space as a country. And therefore, as part of our communication policies, we, we actually prioritize connectivity as a uh, as, as, a, as an important factor for our people in order to leapfrog and catch the rest of the world where they are. Remember, we only got independent in 2011 and uh, with no any form of communication uh, and infrastructure. So as such, South Sudan see this opportunity uh, presented by Spacecom as a new beginning and uh, could really uh, fast track our initiative that we are already online with it. We would like, of course, to, to do this in partnership. Uh, as part of our effort, we actually file and have received uh, approval from ITU for a satellite orbiter for broadcasting and communication. Truly, with, uh, with these challenges, we, we think that 
uh, the initiative by uh, Improvate create uh, uh, give us the, the the route that we can take and fast track our our plans for connecting our population in order to be part of the global community with all the benefit to present from e-learning uh, connectivity and their health in particular, as we have seen with the case of COVID. Uh, until now, part of our country has not even heard about the news of the COVID yet. You can imagine the challenges we face. And if such a technology were to be truly uh, rolled out in our region, we would, uh, we would actually give uh, a Spacecom a, a very positive ground where they can see the results and how it would impact the community. Thank you. So with that said, how do you use communication to enable government services in remote communities in the country? Certainly, we use communication by uh, trying to do rural connectivity. And uh, as a country recovering from war, uh, basically, we've, we encourage very much also the use of communication for dissemination of peace information and for disarming the war veterans and for promoting peace and reconciliation. Remember, this is a country that has been at war sometime among communities who are actually uh, disconnected. So we look at communication also as a facilitator for peace and promote commerce among people. All right. Earlier, I, I recall right. uh, uh, Honorable Tony Blair made a reference to how sometimes some people have no connection among themselves. Really, the case is in South Sudan, and Honorable Tony Blair has been very instrumental in the independence of South Sudan. He's somebody we are indebted to him, and we think he has actually spoken very much of all the challenges that are, are exhibited here. Thank you. Mr. Guy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's now move to speak with Ms. Mamari Gobek Kamara, Deputy Minister of Information and Communication from Sierra Leone. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, ma'am, with Sierra Leone being a coastal country, what nationwide communication challenges are you sharing in your inner land with landlocked countries like the latest in South Sudan? What do you see as challenges that are unique to you in particular? All right, I'm very sorry about that. Unfortunately, we're having some technical issues and we can't quite hear you, but we will come back to that. So just stand by, please, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right, let's move now to Tanzanian ambassador to Israel, Job Masima. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So uh, Tanzania is obviously amaz an amazing country, not only because it's wonderful people, overwhelming wildlife and the Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in Africa, but also because you've developed a unique approach regarding ICT regulation. Can you please share with us how these regulations specifically in relation to cellular companies convert reinvestment into connectivity and development of remote communities? Thank you for having me in your majestic studio and the uh, very good program. You're which welcome I've been anytime. attending for, for a number of times. Sure. Uh, coming to Tanzania, <clears throat> satellite communication is very important. But before going to your question, let me, let me address three issues which I think the previous speakers haven't addressed them correctly. Uh, it says true that Africa we are facing a problem of, 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 of internet connectivity and uh, more or less an unreliable, unreliable net uh, uh, penetration. That is true. But there are three issues which I thought that they should need, uh, uh, they needed to be addressed. One is the cost of, of, of high cost of data and the internet uh, facilities is really a problem for Africa. With all those problems which you are talking about, now come to this issue. Can we afford those high cost of data and internet services? I think this company is high time to address that. That's one. But another problem which you are also facing is, is the online payments, uh, issues of online payments such as trust. A number of people, including my people from my home country, have been complaining a lot because of this communication. Once you transact with the, those people who matters, you don't get the end results. 
all the end results is different from what you got at that one. So let's go with the, all the efforts we are doing. It's high time also to address this one. How are you going to tackle it? Because it's taking down uh, 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 the efforts which we are progressing. And the third issue, which I thought also they should look at it, is that of uh, low technology adoption by the firms, firms, firms that uh, uh, offices and the big firms mm -hmm. in Africa. Not all, they are still traditional. So we are concentrating on individuals and letting these big firms not to uh, uh, adapt this 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 satellite communication. So in addition to those which have been said before, I think we better also address to this. Now coming back to our, to our, to our, to our question uh, on satellite communication. In Tanzania, luckily, uh, we, we do have three advantages, which you could say that is above the rest of some of the countries, and we use them uh, 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 accordingly. One is uh, the, the geographical location we are having. Tanzania, we are, we, are, we, are, we are having a coastal line of about 1,402 miles. So it's a gateway to six landlocked countries, including Sudan, yeah, which the minister was appointing here. So with the, the gateway this what, uh, 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 to these six countries is not only on cargo, uh, there is the, 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 the fiber or whatever has come for that. So this one for us is a very big advantage. Another advantage which we are having for us as Tanzania is the size and the demograph of it. As big as it is, Tanzania is more or less 43 times as, as big as Israel. Or you can say that Tanzania, the way it is, you can, you can, you can, is, 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 is bigger than the, 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 is bigger than all of Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, and Rwanda combined. Wow. That will get Tanzania. But our population is still very low. They have been pointing out that you could find that in rural areas, eh, eh, the population is scattered. So in Tanzania, if we could compare with Israel, our, our population density is 67, uh, 67 people per square kilometer compared to, uh, to, to, to Israel, which, is, which I think is around 400 per square kilometers. Now, with this one, it comes to the challenge of communication because with, the 60, with this density population, uh, now how are you communicating then? This is really a challenge which also we need to address through that. It's an advantage, but it's also, uh, also, 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 also a challenge. So uh, uh, generally what I can say about it, Tanzania is that once it comes to, dig to digital connection, slightly we are better off than the rest of uh, our neighbors. Wonderful. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for filling in the blanks for us today. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. Great. All right, now we are joined by Mrs. Juanita Clark, CEO of Digital Council Africa. The Digital Council embraces the extraordinary possibilities that the digital era has for Africa. The Council believes that the digital economy will enhance the quality of life for African citizens and allow Africa to be extremely competitive in the global market. Mrs. Clark, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us today. You are working with the African government's policymakers, helping African countries to find their digital strategies to safeguard their future Future status. You hold a very firm and practical approach to regarding the combination of fiber and satellite networks. Do you find these two technologies to be competitive or complementary to one another? Good morning and thank you, Lauren. And uh, uh, well done on an excellent event. Uh, thank you, uh, Improvate and uh, Spacecom for the invitation. Um, you know, the whole conversation around um, the either or of technologies that we are always talking about, I think really stems from the consumer mindset where we look at particular brands when it comes to consumer devices. But um, it's just simply the way that competition has panned out uh, historically uh, at consumer level and, and how society has viewed uh, you know, technology. But when it comes to technological infrastructure, particularly pertaining to connectivity, that layer, there is no either or. You know, we have to um, look at how they can complement each other. And, and for us to bridge this immense uh, digital divide that Africa is facing, we need to consider all available technologies. And certainly, uh, some of them will make more sense in certain uh, geographical areas than, um, you know, than other would. Uh, others would. And, um, you know, satellite in particular has an immense role to play in connecting rural communities to the digital economy. 
Juanita, regarding African Tier 2 or Tier 3 cities, if it was up to you to decide, would you recommend getting them on a national satellite network as a first means to gain access? Uh, Lauren, to answer that question, you know, I think we have to, um, and I think, you know, we've all got a bit of pandemic fatigue, but, you know, you have to, you can't exclude the pandemic out of this conversation. So, you know, we are viewing uh, more and more people working from home. Um, and, and one of the side effects of working from home is people's ability to relocate out of the major metros and, uh, you know, return to villages and, and smaller towns. Um, and of course, this has got immense benefits for the city you know, they curb urbanization, um, you know, cities are bursting at the seams uh, globally. This is a problem, not just in Africa, but particularly in Africa as well. So, um, you know, so if people can move out of the cities and if we can take this immense burden off the large metros and in turn help the rejuvenation of smaller tier two and tier three towns, that would be a phenomenal success story. Um, but, you know, there's one critical thing that is required for people to move out of the cities and still remain a productive citizen, and that's access to connectivity. So for us, uh, you know, anything or any goods, uh, you know, connectivity solution would, uh, you know, make sense. And certainly, um, you know, Africa's already fallen significantly behind in the connectivity race. And satellite, again, has got this immense role to play. Um, you know, I think Dan referenced it, you know, when he spoke about rapid deployment. You know, we can rapidly connect people in tier two and tier three towns. Um, you know, he's also referenced the fact that, um, you know, we've got this very big uh, youth, uh, the youth population, 60% of the citizens in Africa are, you know, below the age of 30. And people want to go to universities. And we're not keeping up uh, you know, pace with the building of universities. And, you know, we're going to have a problem. 20 years from now, we are sitting with a massive educational problem. And e-learning is going to become increasingly important. Um, and, you know, we will not be able to send our schools to our children to physical environments anymore. So, um, you know, satellite connectivity, certainly in the more rural areas in tier two, tier three towns, is going to play an incredibly important role to provide services to the next generation and to people looking to work from home outside of urban areas. Juanita, thank you so much for that. Before I say goodbye to you and let you go, I just want to turn to Dan over here for one second and see if he has any response to the comments you just made. I totally agree with her. I think that uh, the satellite is an enabler and, and for us, the big challenge that we have and the DCP that we're introducing is putting the application over the infrastructure. Everybody talking about the connection and the infrastructure, but at the end of the day, we need to provide the solution that will enable all the technology and all the application and uh, enable the education in remote location, the telemedicine in remote location. So I think that uh, it's a complementary solution and it's a full suite of services together. And the focus should be on the application and implementation and not on the infrastructure itself. Okay, thank you for that, Dan. And thank you so much, Juanita Clark, for joining us. Okay, uh, we are going to wrap up this uh, section of the panel. We're going to try to go one more time uh, to... Uh, okay, we're not going back to that interview. There are some technical difficulties. So thank you all for being on this panel, demonstrating and highlighting a great vision and needs which depend on good communication throughout the country. Now we want to move on to our next panel and discuss in depth how satellite communication technologies affect and enable advanced government services and how it is essential for every nation especially developing countries. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off.
Okay, welcome back. I want to welcome here in the studio Oren Tepper, Spacecom SVP Global Sales, Aviv Ronai, VP Marketing and Product at Novelsat, the Ambassador and Special Envoy of Ethiopia to Israel, Mr. Reda Nega Alemu, Mr. Aran Shapiro, Director of Technology and Business Ventures at Spacecom, Mr. Avraham Kofi Asante, CEO of Ghana Investment Funds for Electronic Communications, will join us, Dr. Solomon Balai, Minister Advisor to the Ministry of Innovation and Technology in Ethiopia, Mr. Abdi Lisa Yilma, head of Ethiopian Space, Science and Technology Institute, and Mr. Adrian Hall, Chief Operating Officer at Extensia. Thank you everyone for being a part of this panel today. I'd like to give a special welcome to Professor Mamour Chole, Director General for Accreditation, Private and Foreign Higher Education Institutions in the Republic of South Sudan. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks. So, Thanks for having me. Of course. So this was the year in which the world witnessed, due to the global COVID pandemic, how important it is to have strong communication infrastructures to enable remote learning. Even in places where schools are connected to internet infrastructure, students find it difficult and in many locations impossible to connect and continue their education from home. How did South Sudan deal with its educational challenges during the recent pandemic? Thank you very much. Uh, as you put it, in fact, the importance of communication technology in education has been recognized uh, prior to the, 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 the downing of uh, COVID-19. Now, South Sudan, which is now described as a low-tech country, has a lot of difficulties when it comes to using discharging education services uh, during COVID-19. And in fact, the good news that we received at the beginning of the year is that the fiber optic uh, cable connection has reached South Sudan. And therefore, our objective is to connect all these areas in South Sudan with fast uh, internet uh, connections that will enable us to discharge our education responsibilities. Uh, what we did as a low tech country is that we decided to identify our needs. What are really our needs at this time? And one of the issues that we recognize is that we need to combine both offline as well as online. Because in some occasions, you still need some sort of face-to-face -face, uh, face -face interaction because uh, using only internet and simulation programs and all these other uh, communication or high-tech program may not be enough you see, to teach students in some specialization like medicine, engineering, and all these things. So with this, we decided to do both of them, combine uh, offline as well as online. As you put it correctly, we, we the country is not really uh, well covered with internet connection as well as communication, etc. So we encourage all the universities to open centers all around these remote areas. And that will enable the students to use these centers. And these centers were all connected with uh, photocopy machines, uh, computer laboratories, internet, television screen, radios, pre-recorded material, as well as facilities that the students can use. And because of this low internet, sometimes downloading and uploading material is not easy. So it is a chance for these students to avoid them congregating in one places or in, uh, in main campuses. It is a chance for them to photocopy materials, to access internet, to receive handout, connect to the main content, and then get interacted with their tutors and their lecturers, wherever they may be. In towns where there is higher institutions, then we did some kind of memorandum of understanding between all these universities that students from one university can use facilities of other universities just to avoid students moving around during COVID-19. Again, also, we observed that uh, some facilities like uh, smartphones, uh, WhatsApp, Messenger, Zoom, with finance are really very important, especially when we discharge our uh, education services. And therefore, all the universities encourage the students to do so, to have, you see, any of these facilities and get connected to either centers or 
to the university campus where they can receive information on a regular basis. Universities also were instructed to digitalize books and material in their libraries because that will help students who are in remote areas to get access to these materials through the established centers. And we are still moving on to encourage you see, establishment of more centers in all the remote areas. Though all this, there is a lot of challenges. As I mentioned earlier, network connectivity is one of the challenge because there is no network coverage for all over the country. Again, also, most of our staff are not really well trained in using offline and online facilities. And therefore, that one training of teachers so that they cope up with the new responsibilities is one of the challenges we are facing at the moment. Uh, we also felt that there is a need for mobilizing resources and availing funds to sponsor all these activities because all these activities cannot move on smoothly without having funds. Sending people down to do some small lectures, face-to-face -face lectures, as well as providing these materials need a lot of investment. So these are the, the few steps that we have uh, taken and we are still moving on to improve all these experiences as the country now taking this issue of online and building of infrastructure, online infrastructure is as a priority. So we are still moving on improving our system so that we keep on uh, providing uh, education services to our students wherever they are. Thank you very much. All right, keep up with the good work, Professor Chol. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, let's move now to Mr. Avraham Kofi Asante, CEO of Ghana Investment Funds for Electronic Communications. Thank you for joining us. Um, in Ghana, I run the Universal Access Fund for connectivity to unserved and underserved communities. And for that matter, satellite communication is one, is one of the very important um, facilities that we need for us to reach the underserved and also to give them fast and um, prompt connectivity. Um, we have been involved in the deployment of the satellite um, technology, one, to provide data services and also to provide voice for rural communities. We have areas that have very difficult terrain where you, when you use a traditional terrestrial technology, of line of sight, you are unable to reach such communities. It therefore, it therefore puts them in a position of disadvantage where they cannot be part of the knowledge society or they cannot receive medical services as those in the urban areas and where connectivity is very easy to be uh, made. So for us, satellite connectivity has become one of our key provisions in providing um, connectivity solutions for both data and voice for many rural communities, and especially for those who are in very difficult terrains. And um, we have deployed a number of them. In some areas, we have um, cited connectivity for clinics, that is um, for medical um, services, and it is working very, very effectively, especially in the Western Northern part of Ghana, where we are very difficult terrains. These have been deployed. We also have areas which we call the overseas, um, far away from the center of, from the urban areas. We have also deployed for them in um, the area of provision of uh, educational facilities. As of now, we can identify not less than 46 communities that are benefiting from our satellite hub, because Ghana owns a satellite hub, which is managed by Dizengov. And we believe strongly that if we go that trajectory and um, be able to solve the problem of getting finances where we can have more space, um, I, 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 we have more space pitches, then we can um, be able to provide good services for these people. So I think the challenge that we have is funding. If we have enough funding, then we can have more space segments and we'll be able to give them broadband 
services in these areas. Because of this limitation, some of these rural communities have only voice services, but they do not have data because we don't have enough to buy the bandwidth that they need. And we think that um, working from that um, perspective, we are looking forward for collaborations with other organizations that will help us expand our connectivity for these underserved and unserved areas through satellite connectivity. Sir, we have mentioned education as a significant topic to be addressed by governments. What is the role and ability of organizations such as yours to enable solutions facing this great challenge? Um, the, 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 I think the solution for these challenges is for us to receive some government funding. You know, the Universal Service Fund takes 1% of net revenue from the telcos or the mobile network operators and other ISPs. However, we think that if we can have some kind of collaboration from um, development partners and government would also assign some funding for this purpose, it would help us to be able to um, resolve some of these issues. Uh, because, you know, like we always mention, the young people in these areas cannot wait. And as much as they do not have connectivity, especially in this time of COVID, it cuts them totally off. And um, it also um, is a disincentive for investors who want to be in the rural areas and um, have some work done. We have a lot of small, medium enterprises that um, really shy out um, from establishing their factories or facilities in such areas and um, it puts some kind of de deprivation on people in the area in terms of even getting employment. But I think that the solution, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. is for more collaborative effort between government and then development partners to observe that we have a lot of the population out there who are deprived because of connectivity. All right, Mr. Asante, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Ghana. We really appreciate it. I also appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course. All right, it's time to turn to Oren Tepper. Hi, Oren. Thank Hi. you for being with us. Thank you. So, Oren, as space, Spacecom's SVP of Global Sales, it seems you are in a perfect position. On the one side, you're meeting the growing demands coming from the African markets. On the other side, you are always at the front edge of technology. We just heard about, uh, you know, the Republic of South Sudan, educational challenges, as well as a handful of other countries. On a nationwide level, how does the AMOS-17, Spacecom's newest satellite, alongside Spacecom's new services, the DCP, as mentioned earlier by your, C, uh, your CEO, Dan, who was with us, how do they help countries such as South Sudan and other African nations see, achieve the educational needs that we were just discussing? Thank you, Lauren, for having us here. So actually, the DCP platform, or Digital Community Platform, is an infrastructure to enable uh, e-learning and educational services, both online and offline, by the way, as, as Professor Chol uh, mentioned before that, uh, for the children. But let's not forget that the same platform can be used also for training the teachers, which is not less important. And, and this is also a challenge, as again, as Professor Chol mentioned in, uh, just uh, before. So moreover, actually the nature of satellite communication, uh, the benefit of that is that the scalability is achieved naturally within the solution. This is very important in order to deliver you know, uh, unified services across a, a nation and while maintaining nearly the same cost. So actually the cost to deliver this solution to dozens of communities is uh, it's nearly the same as the cost of delivery to thousands of communities or the nationwide. So the solution that we are talking about is not cost prohibitive, which is very important also considering the challenges of getting the funding as, as, as was mentioned just before. So overall, how can modern satellite communication help with connectivity throughout a country? What are the benefits of your nation's services over Africa? So I think the, the, one of the inherent benefits of satellite is the unified coverage across the entire territory of, of a nation. Uh, or in other words, it's ubiquity. Okay? So when you think about that, this is the optimal infrastructure to deliver say, all the sort of governmental services, being it you know, e-health or e-learning, financial services, and even broadcasting to, to the communities. 
I cannot think about a better solution or a better method to guarantee that every citizen within a nation will be uh, awarded or, or guaranteed with the same level of governmental services irrespective to his proximity to the urban areas. Which is, this is one of the main challenges that, that large-scale countries in Africa are, are, are experiencing today. So this is actually the beauty of all what we are talking about here, of, of all this conference. Okay, we, we are taking this vision to, into the practical stage, okay, rather than keep it just in, in, in the vision level. So uh, and that, in that sense, it's very important. This is, I think, what actually Spacecom is trying to do with this digital community platform. Wonderful. Oren, thank you so much for thank joining you, us today. Yes, thank you. All right, let's move on now. NovelSat is an international innovator and a leading provider of next generation content connectivity solutions over satellite powered. Powered by innovative technology, NovelSat solutions are pushing the envelope and boosting network performance in order to drive new experiences and expand business potential. Aviv Ronai is NovelSat's Vice President of Marketing and Product, and he joins us now. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. So, Aviv, go ahead and tell us a bit more about NovelSat. Okay. NovelSat provides a leading content connectivity solution serving both the video broadcast and the broadband connectivity markets. If you can move to the next slide, we can see some of the applications that we serve. We focus on high volume and high value application. And as for example, on the broadcast side, we provide video distribution and, and uh, contribution solutions, content delivery network connectivity, and outdoor broadcasting. On the broadband connectivity side, we support applications such as telecom and enterprise solutions, as well as uh, video uh, over cellular networks and other applications like supporting Earth observation satellite. We have thousands of installations serving hundreds of customers, supporting multiple customers around the globe. And we are actually, all of us are consuming services delivered by NovelSat solution. As for example, major, world's major bro, uh, sports events are being delivered relying on NovelSat solutions. Our leadership foundation are actually based on three components. One is our proprietary waveform and premier system architecture, which deliver the world's highest performance transmission. This is coupled and combined with cutting edge integrated video capabilities and IS content connectivity and protection. Moving on to the next slide, all right, let's okay, move on sorry. to the next, next question. Slide, what company. broadband <laughs> solutions are, are you providing and what's unique about your solutions? Great question. We actually support broadband connectivity solution for multiple applications. We can support, we support actually telecom application and delivering connectivity to rural and remote location which are lacking terrestrial network connectivity. We enable that with both point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint application and we provide highest bandwidth efficiency in order to improve network economics. We also support enterprise connectivity for utilities, infrastructure, and for government services, where we bring broadband connectivity to remote and rural area, as well as enabling high-speed access to cloud infrastructure and services. Speaking of cloud infrastructure and services, we provide pioneering uh, open and flexible cloud connectivity solution in order to streamline data connectivity to satellite connect solutions. So Aviv, your technology connects to satellites like the AMO 17 to bring cellular and broadband services to unserved or undeserved areas, correct? Correct. More than that, we also provide satellite connectivity solution in order to so provide communication during so some disasters or emergency situation, like natural events and disaster, which causes terrestrial network outage. In such cases, we utilize satellite connectivity in order to back up the terrestrial network and restore communication services as quickly as possible. You've also recently announced a unique solution for delivering TV services over cellular networks. What is so special about this service for the people of Africa? This is a very special solution where we actually took our broadband and broadcast expertise and blended them together in order to deliver video and TV services over a mobile network. We actually all want to have our own video experience like we watch TV at home. We want to have it everywhere. And today, more than ever, 
the, our first screen, if not the only screen, of we, for which we use to connect and, and consume video and TV services is our mobile devices. And we would like to deliver these services over our mobile devices. We're doing that by taking the content delivery network to the edge, to the base station location, bringing the video closer to subscribers and enabling this kind of unlimited video services to the users. With that, we enable live services as well as on-demand video services at very high volumes, and we improve the quality of experience of the end users. Sounds extremely innovative. Is this new solution already available? This solution is actually already available and will be available uh, actually within a month's time. And we actually already demonstrated that together with our colleagues at Spacecom. We had a real live demonstration of the end-to-end -end service in action. Wonderful. Aviva Nai, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, moving on now to the Ambassador and Special Envoy of Ethiopia to Israel, Mr. Reda Nega Alemu. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for having me. Uh, and of course, thank you again for coming to another Improvate concert, conference. I had to add that in there. So Ethiopia is clearly a very special country and quite centralized when it comes to communication uh, based on what we've seen and heard today and your knowledge of Ethiopian regulation. I invite you to present a challenge that your country is facing and might be solved or improved by these panel guests. Well, uh, Ethiopia has adopted uh, a space and telecommunication policy and uh, we have identified the challenges that we have in that regard. And it is, it's outlined that the major challenges that we have, one, is regard to the capabilities in terms of lack of skilled human resources on this, in this context, and also space technology capability as a whole, uh, which is also uh, one of the challenges that we have, and uh, weak uh, space in, in infrastructure and absence of uh, regulatory framework in this regard. And in addressing this challenge, the policy has outlined, you know, the opportunities and uh, what are the way out in terms of uh, addressing this challenge. One, uh, it is clearly stated in the policy that uh, we need uh, an organized three layers solution. And this one, it refers to, you know, basic framework in which we, we build an infrastructure infrastructure development for uh, communication and satellite services. And also, you know, in terms of manpower, we need manpower training and capacity building in that regard. And we have to create enabling conditions uh, at domestic level to make sure that uh, there is an efficient and effective utilization of the space technology at home for, uh, you know, telecommunication services, for agriculture, for education and for also other services that uh, we, we can use in, 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 in terms of the space technology services. So based on what you have heard today, how accessible and affordable is satellite communication? And do you think Ethiopia should plan to invest in satellite communication in the future? Yes, you know, uh, Ethiopia has adopted, as I said, an ambitious and uh, uh, competent space program uh, we've launched two, uh, you know, satellites uh, in, the, in the past year, and we continue to work uh, uh, in more concerted way to be able to develop our capacities. Uh, one thing which uh, we, we need collaboration in this regard is, you know, financing and investment in the sector, which the government has introduced, um, you know, the uh, public-private partnership where we, we have... Uh, investment opportunities in, in all sectors. We, co we collaborate with our partners to develop our capability in this regard. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, quickly, I wonder if, Oren, you'd like to respond to any of the comments you just heard. So, so this is actually, actually what I was mentioning before. Um, definitely, the European market is one of the most important markets that, that we are experiencing, and we do see that there is uh, as, as uh, His Excellency mentioned, there is a, a great uh, initiatives and policy going over there. Um, and indeed, this is something that uh, I share actually the same views exactly as, as, as His Excellency in this regard. All right, Aviv, would you like to take an opportunity to respond as well? 
No, I think uh, the issue is pretty much uh, understood and we all uh, hope for more and more satellite services to enable more mm -hmm. and more video and broadband connectivity to Wonderful. Africa. So it looks like everyone agrees. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on now to Mr. Abdisa Yilma, head of the Ethiopian Space Science Institute, ESSI. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting us to participate on such an uh, important event. So what are the main goals of the Ethiopian Space Science Institute? Ethiopian Space Science and Technology uh, Institute was established uh, in 2016. So it's just uh, four years uh, since its establishment. So it, uh, my institute is a leading institute in terms of uh, space science, technology, and application. So the major goal of uh, the Institute is to support uh, the national development program uh, in the area of agriculture, natural resource management, uh, urban and rural uh, land management, and also in the area of uh, uh, communication also. And well, at the end of the day, uh, we are also expected uh, to serve as a source of income and also uh, uh, to create employment opportunity uh, through encouraging uh, private sector uh, participation. So for uh, this purpose, uh, we are engaged in uh, research and technology development activities in, in the area of uh, astronomy, space science and application, remote sensing, uh, geodesy, also on uh, uh, in the area of uh, aerospace uh, engineering, satellite operation, uh, and so on. Uh, we are also trying to develop infrastructure in this area. Uh, uh, also, uh, we are responsible for uh, human resource development. In this respect, uh, we have a postgraduate uh, program in the area of astronomy, uh, space science application, remote sensing and the geodesy, both for uh, master's and the PhD. And uh, this program is affiliated with the Addis Ababa uh, University. And we are also engaged on the development of uh, space and the space related uh, products uh, and services. Sir, we heard in a previous interview um, about the benefits of utilizing a satellite on a national level. Can you share with us the role of science and innovation and any programs that you have going on in the country? Yeah. Uh, so far, uh, we launched uh, two uh, remote sensing satellites uh, in collaboration with uh, the Chinese uh, government. Uh, these satellites are uh, remote Earth observation uh, satellites. So the data obtained from uh, uh, those satellites, uh, we are utilizing it for um, uh, agriculture, uh, water uh, resource management, and in the area of mining uh, and so on. Uh, currently, we are also uh, building, uh, uh, I mean, apart from the two satellites, uh, currently we are also building a, a multi satellite ground receiving station uh, for uh, Earth observation satellites. So, and this uh, project is expected to be to start operation uh, by March. Uh, this year, and we have also a plan to uh, build uh, satellite uh, manufacturing uh, assembly and the testing center uh, in the country. And we, are also, we have also a plan to uh, build our own uh, communication satellites, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, we are expecting to realize this project within the next three to uh, four years uh, time. Uh, we are also um, engaged to uh, in the development of uh, the next, I mean, uh, Earth observation uh, satellite. I mean, these are the areas that we are uh, in engaged on. All right, Mr. Yilma, thank you so much and best of luck with all your initiatives. Thank you so much, thank you. Yeah. Okay, moving now to the UK, let's welcome Extension Limited's Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Adrian Hall. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, nice, nice to join you, and thanks to Amos and to Improvate for inviting me to join this. Very happy to have you. Program. 
Now, Extensia has been working with the governments of Africa for many years. You are well-connected and actively involved in new initiatives. Can you share with us Ext uh, Extensia's technologic uh, vision and why do you find satellite communication as a state resource to be an accelerator for national development? Sure, thanks, Lauren. Uh, Extensia, as you say, we've worked in many countries across Africa. Uh, our focus is on sustainable development uh, at a national level across uh, the, the, um, the continent. We believe that the best way to achieve this is through, the, uh, through, through a robust uh, e-government uh, strategy and uh, program. E-government is the foundation for digital transformation. It supports uh, business enablement, uh, citizen engagement, and transparency across government agencies at a local level, at a national level, and uh, regionally as well. Um, there's some exciting technology platforms that uh, support e-government, and uh, these are enabled and supported by cloud uh, infrastructure, which makes the uh, applications more affordable, more efficient, um, more innovative in terms of uh, collaboration, etc. But we also notice that the solution itself is only part of the problem. The technology platforms only serve to solve a part of the problem with uh, e-government because you've also got to look at literacy. You've got to look at availability of devices. You've got to look at things like affordability. Critical, though, to the success of any e-government program is connectivity. Um, there's a very interesting map that if you look at the true size of Africa, uh, that you can see a map which illustrates exactly how big Africa is as a continent. And within Africa, you could fit China, the US, India, Japan, Eastern Europe, and most of Western Europe. And mm -hmm that gives you an idea of actually how big Africa is. And whilst uh, the, the, the urban areas are where a lot of people do live, there's also a large uh, portion of Africa and people that live in rural, more remote areas. And those areas uh, need to be connected uh, for the whole of e-government to be uh, efficient. And for that to happen, there's only really satellite that can provide that. Uh, it, it's unaffordable to be putting towers, fiber, and, and uh, other infrastructure into those rural areas with sparse population. So satellite really is the way to, to, to make that happen and very efficient at doing that. With the new satellites in the market now, the, uh, the, 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 the speeds, the bandwidths, the affordability, uh, and the reliability are much improved to the old satellite versions that we saw in previous years. Mr. Hall, Africa is known for its big five. Can you point out the big five in digital communication areas that will shine thanks to the new satellite solutions like Spacecom, NationSat, and DCP, the digital community platform? Sure, Lauren. Uh, for me uh, and for Extensia, the big five areas where improvements can be made across the continent and will have the greatest impact uh, include healthcare, for instance, where again, with healthcare, many clinics are out in very remote areas. So uh, they'll benefit hugely from satellite. And as we see with the COVID uh, pandemic, it's essential that everywhere data is connect collected from across all areas of a country uh, the, for the digital healthcare platforms to be efficient and, and gather the right levels of data and information, uh, that connectivity is essential to the most remote areas. Education is another key area. And, and again, looking at here and now, uh, lots of children are not going to school at the moment. They can't go to school physically. And unless they can access that online, education suffers and that will have a long-term effect so having satellite having the platforms uh, for education enabled and delivered over uh, satellite connectivity means that education can get into the most remote areas and have the biggest impact across each country agriculture is another uh, area 
you've got small holders uh, and, and uh, farmers in remote areas that need to know where they can go in order to sell their goods or to buy goods or to, to transact. And uh, they need connectivity as well as the applications that will enable them to get that information. So again, satellite is essential for that. And it's also essential for helping them to see and predict uh, weather patterns and crop uh, rotations and, and things like that are essential um, areas where satellite can support. Emergency services uh, are, are required not always where uh, there's a, a mobile phone connectivity or where there's a fiber connectivity. Uh, the, you know, emergency services can happen anywhere and there needs to be connectivity that supports that. And finally, I think disaster relief has to be uh, taken into consideration because disaster relief, um, uh, refugee zones, etc., uh, are again in remote areas. And the, the thing with disaster relief is it happens when it happens. You don't necessarily have the network already there waiting for it, whereas satellite is there ready and can be turned on uh, in instantly. So for me, top five healthcare education agriculture, emergency services, and disaster relief. All right, some very important points. Adrian Hall, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, let's turn to Iran Shapiro. Hello, Iran, thank you so much again for being with us. Thank you, Lauren, nice to be here. Sometimes the key elements for success rely on the actual details that build the right solutions. Which tech ingredient in Spacecom's new DCP digital community platform makes it so accessible for Africa? Sure. Um, I think what we heard today, there are a number of issues when you're trying to uh, meet the challenges that are mentioned about education, health, and so on. The two main aspects that uh, put, uh, let's say, a high challenge level is the availabil availability of electricity, which in uh, rural Africa is below 20%, and the connectivity, which is also very low. So if you look at what needs to be deployed per community or per village or per a small city, um, first, the deployment cost could be extremely high if you're looking at technologies that were available at in now, um, especially when you're trying to do uh, duplicate that for a large number of communities. There's also the perception that uh, the ongoing cost of connectivity via satellite could be high. Uh, there's the deployment complexity uh, in terms of technology skills and the management of such deployments. And there's the time to market that governments are saying, okay, if I'm going now into a project, how long will it take for it to be accessible and usable by the uh, population? So what we've done is together with uh, uh, multiple partners, some of them are, are speaking today here, we've built a unified platform that can actually serve multiple applications at the same time. At the core of the platform, which is residing in each community, there are four components. First is the connectivity via satellite. The second is the local cloud, which reside in the community. The third is the Wi-Fi uh, hotspot uh, connectivity within the community. And the fourth, which is very important, especially when you go over grid, is a solar panel, uh, a solar uh, powered solution that allows all these uh, services to be delivered without having the need for local electricity. Now, what uh, makes it accessible uh, is now is the development of new technologies uh, that we have coupled it together with a, a very powerful, very advanced satellite in the form of MS-17. So the combination of both the ground technologies and the satellite uh, connectivity allows us to uh, provide this unified solution in a very uh, cost-effective, sustainable manner in the short and the long run. And, um, some of these ingredients are including like advanced solar systems. In the past, when you're looking at solar systems, they used to be very expensive on one hand. They were not providing too much capacity on the other hand, and they had a very short lifespan. New technology allows us to have cheaper solution that lasts much longer and can power such a, an encompassing solution per community. There is also a sector-specific solution that we are building with our partners. For example, if you look at uh, a digital clinic, so one thing is you want everything to be connected and always on. But the second part is if you, if you want to have advanced systems like 
ultrasound on X-ray locally at those remote locations, uh, they have to be very power efficient in order to be able to work off the solar system. So all of that, you have to take that into account when you build such an encompassing solution. And when you want to deliver content that can reside locally on the local cloud, you have to do it in a very efficient manner. And we have developed uh, with some of our partners a very efficient way of delivering content to any number of locations in a very cost-effective manner. Now, the last thing which we should bear in mind that if you want to make it accessible to the people living in the suburban and the rural location, it has to be very simple because many of the population in these areas are lacking in digital skills. So we have to make the solution also very simple to use for those type of uh, populations as well. So, Iran, how scalable is the DCP for governments in terms of the planning of the solution and the ability to quickly deploy and see quick results? Uh, actually, so yeah, it's very scalable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the key points that we uh, have discussed with our partners, it was apparent that when governments are considering going into such projects that digitally transform those locations, that they regard scalability, flexibility, and quick deployments as the key uh, uh, factors in, in what solution to uh, select and how this can be deployed. So what we have uh, made sure is that um, uh, we build the platform that to make it simple first in the deployment phase, because deployment could be very complex, especially here like uh, Northwest uh, Ghana. It's hard to get to those places. Right. So, so the deployment itself should be as simple as possible. It should be simple to operate on an ongoing basis. And the, and the platform itself, besides the simplicity to deploy it, is also scalable in two manners. First, in the community, once you have the building blocks or the infrastructure, it's very uh, simple to add additional application, additional services that can be delivered within the community. The second part is how scalable is the system when you're going nationwide and you want to handle thousands of locations? How the, the backend of uh, all the system that has to uh, be used for that can, can grow, how scalable they are. So what we made sure is first that we can handle thousands of locations on one hand, and this includes, beside the distribution of content to any number of sites like 30, 300, or 3,000, like Oren mentioned earlier, this is agnostic to us. The, the solution is designed that it will be almost, uh, uh, you know, un unlimited in size on that manner. Mm -hmm. And the second part is that the backend, that now you want the backend to be able to support education or health. So if you go to health, you need now, if you go digital, you need a medical record per patient. You need a way to keep the history. This needs to reside both in the local cloud, but also in, in the main cloud of the government. So the system at the back end should be able to support it. Same thing if you want now to monitor the progress of students using some e-education systems at the village or even doing some homeschooling with our solution. It's also something that has to be very scalable. So we made that as well. And last but not least, you also need to have a lot of uh, uh, internet back, uh, capabilities or internet capacity to be able to support all of that. With the Amos 17 a unique design, of a very uh, strong uh, coverage per country. You can have a lot of capacity. This will allow governments to uh, deploy such solutions without having to care about uh, the size and the number of uh, locations. It will be able to support all of that. Interesting, Iran Shapiro, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for being with us today for this panel. Now, for the last hour, we have heard our distinguished guests sharing their vision and skills. But how does it look in real life when Spacecom's innovation and technology meet the reality of Africa? From Vision to Reality, a report by Beyond Communication News. Let's watch.
from the United Nations headquarters in New York. I'm Tal Heinrich here to tell you how the international community at this iconic UN building right behind me is closely watching a remarkable project taking place in Africa nowadays. It digitally connects clinics and schools across the continent through an advanced satellite. This incredible, intriguing initiative is led by Spacecom, a leading satellite communication service provider. Grant Neunberg, Borders reporter, brings us an exclusive special report on the successful, life-changing and life-saving operation and what it looks like on the ground in Africa. Watch. Africa is changing amazingly fast. With a staggering three-quarters of its population under the age of 35, the need for Internet access and use of data in Africa is growing. While internet connectivity in urban areas has significantly improved, the suburbs and countryside were left far behind. With no internet access and connectivity, much needed basic government services in non-urban areas have been less effective or barely exist. People who live in remote places like this say they don't use the internet. Two of the biggest barriers according to research, affordability and accessibility. But that is starting to change. In just a week, communications satellite will launch from Florida and bring internet and television communications to the entire African continent. Spacecom is a leading satellite communication service provider. It offers information and communication ICT solutions covering most of the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa, where Spacecom's intriguing project titled the Digital Community Platform, or DCP, first implemented in Mozambique, dramatically shortens technological distances. Behind you, what you can see is the satellite plate, which basically provides connectivity, 5G, stable uh, connection that we've been working with in the past few weeks and has been providing us with whatever we needed and beyond. Here for the first time, we reveal the extension of the internet and connectivity revolution in Africa, the digital future of the world's fastest growing region. Satellite will always play a critical role in connecting people across Africa and can reach in places where other physical infrastructure may not be able to do so, especially post-COVID as people migrate from physical uh, encounters to a more, into a more digital world. Thanks to modern satellite technology, distant villages and towns are now able to access what has already become a basic human right in the urban areas. I think it's a huge uh, role that satellite communication uh, has uh, uh, more than ever because of the COVID pandemic. In order to be able to connect remote location, uh, backhaul over satellite is the common way to connect those remote locations for the solar network. It's going to help us to be able to access more information faster. It's going to help us to be able to connect with um, other people in the fields of education and healthcare that are across the globe. Capitalizing on the opportunity, Mozambique is cooperating with the satellite communication company, improving the country's medical services in non-urban areas. Drag each word to its synonym or antonym. At this clinic, children can play online educational games while waiting for a doctor's appointment. We're trying to provide a clinic with internet connectivity and solar energy to be able to provide a sufficient medical diagnostic. Fiquei mais ainda surpreendida pelos novos equipamentos que aqui temos. Muita novidade, muita tecnologia boa, mais fácil de obtermos os diagnósticos. E isso é uma maravilha. Doctors and nurses are also satisfied with the high technology, improving their services and performance. Nesta pandemia, Temos uma solução para tal. Existe uma nova plataforma que é a Spacecom, é, que veio para ajudar o nosso país e os outros países que não têm finanças para tal, para a, alguma organização certa para a saúde. Using the system, rural clinics can communicate with health professionals thousands of miles away. In real time, it is possible to share ultrasound data, a hearing or a vision test with a specialist doctor overseas. A implementação do satélite irá nos ajudar muito. Quando nós mandamos os resultados para Portugal, por exemplo, leva um, um mês para os resultados virem até cá. Para não levar esse todo mês, o médico pode também nos ajudar via online. 
the medical team in the countryside then receives an accurate diagnosis and instructions for further treatment. Efectivamente, este aparelio es muy práctico, muy importante, sobre todo en diagnóstico ambulatorio y aquellos lugares donde es casi inaccesible esta tecnología. Satellite communication is also revolutionizing education in Africa. Spacecom has created a local cloud in the village, dedicated to educational and any other content required for other government services in the community. I believe that will be a huge support, a huge backbone for the educational system. And connectivity has been uh, definitely a real priority in education globally. Your lecturer can actually deliver a kind of a classroom experience to you right there online with the backup from the satellites, enhancing the quality of education and all of that. This new task we have, which is providing new solutions and reimagining uh, education uh, uh, in a creative way, I think we can get it. Thanks to its success, the project that you saw here is expected to expand across Africa in the near future. With one additional small effort and Spacecom's technology and innovation, life in non-urban Africa is on the fast track for a significant improvement. And welcome back. Now, as we spoke about the vision, needs, and technology in the earlier panels, it is a pleasure to open this third panel and talk about practical ways to implement and enable communication to achieve country growth and resilience. As most of us already know, today more than ever, satellite communication is available, accessible, and affordable. It is truly the enabler of any economic and social growth throughout Africa. In this panel, we would like to focus on success stories about ways of funding a wide range of projects all across Africa and how on the most practical level we can use advanced communication solutions such as Spacecom's digital community platform to launch Africa to the next level. I'd like to welcome here in the studio Israel's former Minister of Science, Mr. Izhar Shai, Spacecom's SVP Business Development, Marketing and Strategy, strategy excuse me, Ms. Mr. Ofer Asif, and Arye Schnei, Head of International Finance from Bank Le Umi. Joining us from abroad, Ismaila Togola, CEO of SMTD in Mali, Yariv Cohen, CEO of Ignite Power, Ambassador Wol Meyer Aryek, Head of Mission and Ambassador of the Republic of South Sudan, and Ambassador Ababi Demis, Director General of MOFA Investment and Technology Transfer in Ethiopia. Izhar Shai, hello again. I'd like to start with you. Thank you so much for being here today. Hello, Loren. Thank you for having me. Of course. So you have been a proud member of Israel's innovation and tech ecosystem for decades. Until recently, you served as the Minister of Science, and among the many responsibilities, you were also in charge of Israel's civil space program. What is the importance of reliable connectivity nationwide and communication as enablers for the development and success of science and technology based on your experience in Israel? Well, communications has always been perceived as a significant part of any growing economy and definitely a modern economy. I believe that this last year was the ultimate proof uh, as to the, the need and uh, reliance on uh, technologies and communications in order to, to enable coping with uh, the, the various ramifications of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. As we have all seen around the world, communications was the, one of the most significant parts of, uh, of uh, enabling back to life communications, education, economy, anything that deals with uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of all of us around the world. Here in Israel, we uh, also saw a proof and significant indications of the importance of communications, definitely as it relates to communicating with kids around the country, with uh, people who could not attend physically to work, with uh, people in the periphery of the country. All of these needs and many more were a proof that we rely more than ever now on modern communications, on, um, on infrastructure that enables modern communications and definitely satellites being a significant part of that infrastructure. So how do you see the connection between the establishment of human capital in science to the overall satellite domain in general? Well, you know, um, as we develop 
the technology and science into the next levels of uh, enabling space communications, satellites included. Uh, definitely the reliance on human capital is becoming more and more significant. Here in Israel, we prepared a plan for the next 10 years where we put the various foundations of this infrastructure and education and preparing the next level of human capital of scientists, researchers, engineers, business people, all of whom will be connected together in this up and growing industry here in Israel, uh, will be a significant part of the next level of uh, preparedness for us as a nation and for the academy in Israel, the, the science and the technology, the, the infrastructure, the whole economy as it relates to space. Uh, starts with educating, preparing the next generation to coping with the various challenges of modern communications. Well, the world certainly learned a lot in the last year. I have to agree with you on that, Yisar Shai. Thank you so yeah. much. All right, let's move now to Ambassador Wol Meyer Aryek, head of the mission of the Republic of South Sudan. He joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us today. Sir, how... Um. <clears throat> Sir, thank you for being with us today. Let me just continue on to my question. How do you see the ability of Israel and South Sudan to successfully cooperate? Well, <clears throat> we, um, the, 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 the technology, um, the communication in particular, you know, we, South Sudan is land, the landlocked country. So basically, um, the, the next um, set of opportunity would definitely be communication. And we are aware that the, the state of Israel has is the, the high-tech company, the, the, the high-tech um, country, and definitely South Sudan would be able to benefit. We have cooperated with the, uh, the state of Israel in so many ways in agriculture uh, and in water uh, management technology uh, and also in, uh, um, in all other possible technology uh, communication system, in particular satellite. So we see um, opportunity uh, uh, between South Sudan and Israel uh, improving uh, and getting better. Uh, we are looking for Israeli companies and the government uh, in order to build the capacities of people of South Sudan, in particular the youth uh, and, and, and the girls in particular, because our population is actually based in rural areas, uh, as you have already uh, heard from uh, our National Communication Authority Director General, and then the Ministry of, of uh, Higher Education, that there are huge challenges uh, that are faced by uh, a country like South Sudan, uh, which is landlocked, and also issues of peace and security. So we look into technology and cooperation with Israel in order to improve the lives of people of South Sudan. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Ambassador. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, one thing coming very strongly from this event is that Spacecom is leading a revolution that makes satellite solutions both high performance, multidisciplinary, and cost efficient. Spacecom highlights the Na NationSat and the DCP digital community platform, which are both designed for rapid deployment. It seems like sometimes the decision making process is taking longer than the, de the, de the deployment. Excuse me. Ofer, welcome again to the studio. Let me hear about this from your perspective. Thank you. Um, that's an interesting point, uh, Lorraine. Actually, when you come to think about it, uh, the setting is there. Uh, the satellite is in the sky. It's in orbit. Uh, it's operational. Um, and the implementation is fairly quick, uh, as you might say. And, and the scale is there and easy. We talked uh, earlier about the DCP, which is scalable and can be implemented quickly. Yet the decision making uh, could take some time, and I think that uh, for me the way that I uh, that I feel and think about it is that it's a question of investment and financing uh, versus the outputs and the results that you gain out of it and the time spent uh, to achieve these results. And when you look at it, uh, what we are trying to do is to uh, lower the boundaries, uh, lower the entry point with uh, good and advanced technology, with efficient uh, operations. Um, that will enable very cost-effective solution. And uh, we top it with uh, work with financial institutions and banks that will come to these projects that we are, uh, we are uh, uh, providing and leading. Um, and combining to get together, I think that uh, this will enable maybe to shorten the, the cycles and provide uh, these leaders that decide about uh, these projects to not just decide about them uh, uh, 
um, I would say, in a more timely manner, but also to see the results more quickly and see the fruition of their, of their uh, programs. What do you see as the top advantages of NationSat on the AMO-17 satellite for governments in Africa? Okay, so, um, well, NationSat is probably a, a perfect solution. Uh, for governments. It runs on the AMO-17 that we mentioned earlier, which is absolutely the most advanced satellite over Africa today. Uh, it's a powerful satellite, very modern, and it is located uh, basically in the optimal position above the Sub-Sahara, right at the heart of, uh, of Africa. Um, I think that uh, when you look at, especially at, uh, at Africa, you have large countries uh, sometimes a lot of uh, non-urban population, uh, large percentages of non-urban uh, population. Um, there is limited uh, uh, coverage, and I think that nations that enables countries to take control, to place infrastructure of their own. Uh, they're, they're able to control the whole infrastructure as a whole for civil and non-civil, homeland security or other government services, post office services, etc. Um, and in the end of the day, they can run their, the programs that they wish to run in a very uh, professional manner on a professional communication infrastructure. So as a whole, um, we are actually uh, facilitating uh, indirectly the growth and prosperity of these countries. Wow. All right. Well, for Asif, thank you so much for that explanation. Really appreciate it. All right, Ignite Power is the fastest growing Pan-African developer, distributor, and financer of life-enabling technologies, providing customers across the SSA region with state-of-the-art solutions to their everyday needs. The company has already directly impacted more than 1.5 million people and created 3,500 local jobs with agents at 10,000 villages across the region. Ignite executes national scale projects working together with governments to empower last mile communities in the fields of electricity, clean water, education, healthcare, and more. Through its new medical project, Ignite is providing remote clinics and health centers with a holistic solution tailor-made to the needs of remote medical staff. By combining off-grid solar systems, satellite-based connectivity, and advanced technologies powered by the solar system, Ignite enables governments to provide millions of people with improved medical services for the first time, leading Africa into a healthier, more sustainable, and inclusive future. Ignite vai ajudar na eletrificação das zonas rurais periurbanas de Moçambique, com o objetivo de beneficiar 2 milhões de pessoas. A fase piloto é esta que estamos a lançar agora na província de Zambésia, distrito de Gilé. Ajuda a comunidade a ter acesso a um recurso que é importante para todos nós, que é acesso à eletricidade, a iluminação. Já eu ficava no escuro, mas tinha painéis solares. Mas os painéis não conseguiam suportar até amanhecer. Eu quis colocar a energia solar aqui na Ignite, porque consegue mesmo suportar e sem baixar a energia até amanhecer. Consigo ter energia à noite, no quarto, na sala, assim como na sala de estudo dos meus filhos. Para comprar uma vela, são 10 meticais e a vela ilumina por 4 horas. Ao passo que a energia da Ignite tem o um custo de 17 meticais ao dia, então é reduzido. Se fizermos a conta, uma família que antes gastava em torno de 1.000, 1.200 só para iluminar, hoje usa 500. Melhorei a vida, uso a energia à noite, consigo carregar o telefone, consigo meus filhos fazerem pelo menos a revisão da aula que estudaram na escola. Vale a pena ter a Ignite. Vale a pena. Ok, let's move now to Yariv Cohen, CEO of Ignite Power. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Greetings from Dubai. 
So, Yariv, can you share your thoughts about conducting such a solution for health, for example? Yeah. So, as you saw in the movie, Ignite is the fast-growing provider of peri-urban and rural solar solution. We develop, deploy, and finance the advanced solutions that you saw that use the satellite communication. For us, solar power and internet connectivity are not the end goal, but the enablers. The infrastructure upon which we can develop and deploy all the advanced technologies that are um, um, th that you can see. We started with home solar, and within 18 months, we connected 1.5 million people, then moved to solar agriculture, changed the landscape of solar pumping in Rwanda. And in 2019, we started working on design for solar and medical systems. When COVID happened, we were ready. We install the system you saw in the video, so the ultrasound, the x-ray, the blood test. That's a picture from our clinic over there. Um, and given that our solar uh, systems are very energy efficient, we were able to add Spacecom connectivity to our clinic in Mozambique and manage the project. It actually took us less than 24 hours to add uh, the connectivity to it, um, and we can do it anywhere. And our experience to what you said is that once you lose the cables, everything scales. So when we cut the power cables and connected 1.5 million people, it happened in no time. Now that we're cutting the internet cable, literally, we can scale, and this is the future of all health and all education, connectivity and solar power. So today, solar power combined with premium satellite connectivity seems like the main solution for the major obstacle holding back proper education and health solutions from reaching remote areas. What is your prediction of the future in that regard? So the, the main challenge on, on everything around is just that they don't have access to infrastructure, the power, the connectivity, the clean water. And what we are seeing now is that that's no longer a problem. That can happen and that's uh, just um, moving as fast as, as possibly can be. And that, that fast deployment, so it doesn't matter where the clinic is, you don't have to train the doctor anymore. It comes online from the satellite. You don't have to connect the power. You don't have to wait for the 4G to be. So what we will see is that most of the education will be moved to online, the same of what we saw in, uh, in our part of the world, and now we're moving to, to Africa, and the same for medical. So what we expect in medical is that there will be a leapfrog from where we are today, which is basically 100,000 clinics that actually don't have any equipment, to fully advanced point-of-care solutions within reach to the whole population of Africa. Okay, Yariv Cohen, thank you so much for joining us from Dubai. Okay, let's move now to Arye Schnei, head of international finance from Bank Laomi. Thank you for joining us, Arye. I hope I pronounced your last name right. Correct. Yes. Thank God. Okay. And then we've heard from, today from Spacecom executives about the opportunities to make a national project with an annual cost below $10 million. This is a breakthrough in terms of bringing new business opportunities into those countries. What is Bank Laomi's portfolio on financing projects in Africa for Israeli companies and for non-Israeli ones as well? Okay, so Bank Lumi is active in structured export finance for the past uh, 30 years, I believe. And so Bank Lumi is one of Israel's leading banks in this area. Uh, we've seen over the past decade a, a, a major shift uh, of projects that we finance towards Africa. I would say from all applications that we receive today, probably 60%, two thirds of these applications are for projects in Africa. And, and we, we shouldn't be surprised by that because, you know, today one of every four, every four children that's born is actually born in Africa. And there's, there's a huge population there and population growth is, is going at high, at high, spe at high speed. And, and, of course, all these people, they need to be fed, they need education, they need medical services, they need employment. And, and so there's a, there's a large demand for, for, for projects in Africa. And so over the past years, we have, we have financed projects in, in Angola, in Zambia, in Kenya, in uh, Senegal, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Rwanda, and many more to come. And, and we do this in diverse areas, agriculture, fish farms, uh, poultry, uh, water infrastructure, telecom infrastructure, all these areas we have actually financed projects in. And, and so uh, this specific area of, of satellite uh, telecom, satellite internet services is of special interest for us. 
Because first of all, we believe that that it it gives gives a lot of help to to um, uh, development of human capital, and we see it will bring real economic growth to the countries where it's implemented. And that's of course for us as a financial institution, it's an important factor. We look also at our source of repayment, and when we see economic growth, it gives us comfort. So what kind of financing solutions can Bank Laomi provide specifically for satellite service providers with African governments? Like, what are the advantages you can contribute to these projects? Okay, what we env envisage if, if, if we talk about a, a, a telecom, satellite telecom project, we envisage that it, payments will be made in two parts. First of all, first of all, there's the capital investment that you have to make to get the infrastructure and the equipment and the installations on the ground. And then there's the, there's the periodic uh, service component that has to, be, has to be paid as well for the internet services and for maintenance, things like that. So where we come in and where we can help is to, to finance the capital investment needs and to spread out the payments over a period. We finance projects up to periods of 10 years. And, and that's, of course, a way where you can make a combination of, of expenditure on CapEx and on OPEX and create the package, combined package, that will suit the needs of the, of the buyer, of the consumer uh, in, the, in the specific country. And um, so we could do this in, as, for, as for financing solutions, we can do it basically in two ways. One way is what we call a buyer's credit, where we as a bank give the financing directly to the buyer, which would usually be the Ministry of Finance of a certain country. And the other solution, alternatively, would be uh, to do it through indirect financing or supplier's credit, where basically we support the supplier to provide financing and spreading out of the payments over a period of time. And in, in both of these solutions, we would eventually rely on support from the Israeli export credit agency named ASHRA uh, that we always use uh, as, as a backing to our financing, and whether it would be uh, through uh, buyer's credit, supplier's credit, uh, each, uh, each of them has got its advantages, disadvantages, but you know, it depends on the deal. You have to go into the deal just for that. All right, Ariash Nai, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, let's move now to Ismaila Togola, the CEO of SMTD. It is such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So as a Mali-based government entity who is dealing with actual deployment in a large country and faces the needs from the market, what do you find to be the key elements for national level infrastructure to enable good services to the community? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, as we said, SMTD has uh, uh, the goal set by the government to deploy infrastructures everywhere in our big country. Uh, Mali, has um, uh, about 1,240,000 kilometer squares. And uh, our main goal is to make sure that infrastructure, whether it's for broadcasting uh, or uh, telecommunication is rich everywhere. So uh, right now we are deploying our newest uh, uh, network for digital TV. And also we are deploying uh, lots of uh, kilometers of fiber optics. Now, the key elements to deploy such infrastructures in such a big country, uh, in my point of view, are four key elements. So you have the security part, you have uh, the electric part, you have the accessibility parts, and also uh, the, the manpower. When it comes to security, uh, the country is so big that we have to make sure to take into account the security parts with all the infrastructure that we acquire and deploy. We have to make sure that once the infrastructure is deployed, uh, that it's safe, whether they're human security or not, that the infrastructure cannot be vandalized. Uh, that's the first part. The second part is uh, accessibility. Uh, being such a big country, we don't have roads everywhere, uh, but we have people everywhere. So we have to find ways to be able to reach those key parts uh, where, um, uh, where, where it's very hard to, to access. Uh, the, the, the second, the, the third key element is um, uh, electricity. Uh, now, when you go to certain rural parts, 
uh, electricity is very scarce. Even if it's available, it's not available all the time. So we tend to prioritize solar power um, a source of energy everywhere we can. Um, so it's still a challenge. So we go with uh, solar power generators and wherever the national electric power is available, we try to combine all three uh, sources of power. Now, the, the fourth element is the, the uh, the, the manpower. When I say manpower, is the, the qualified uh, technician and engineers who can um, uh, be everywhere. We have uh, a growing number of people who are getting into our industry, and we're working hard to uh, to train more uh, so that they can be everywhere. Our infrastructures are available. Um, yes. Okay, Mr. Togola, thank you so much for joining us from Mali. Thank you. Okay, our final question, or rather our next question in this panel, is to you, Ofer. Let's bring you back into the conversation. So we've heard so much today directly from the African policymakers, from Tony Blair and from international leaders. How is Spacecom's vision aligned with all that's being said and raised in our discussions today? Okay, you know, um, today we had uh, great discussions and uh, we heard all the leaders that were talking about um, um, important things, their needs, uh, their inspiration, um, the communication abilities that they wish to have uh, to enable health and to enable education, to enable basic government services to all of their countries. I think that rightfully so, uh, Mr. Izar Shai here have mentioned the COVID. I think the COVID have uh, brought us all into an era that uh, the, the the idea behind digitalization is much more eminent and known to all. And the idea and the needs is, is much more natural, I think, for people. Um, Africa has made, I think, a great uh, advancement in recent years in terms of infrastructure, communication infrastructure as a whole. Um, they made huge pro progress. And we see ourselves as a partners uh, for these governments and as uh, basically enablers um, to uh, continue and drive uh, this, uh, this vector or this uh, uh, route to enable a, a faster and quicker implementation of infrastructure of communication in these countries. Uh, Mr. Togola have, uh, have just uh, mentioned about knowledge. So part of what we do is turnkey projects and BOT projects where we transfer knowledge over time since we're working over three decades in this, uh, in this field. We have a lot of know-how and knowledge. Um, the DCP that we have been uh, mentioning and the nation sat is doing exactly that for, uh, for these governments and, and nations. And uh, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's the whole direction that we are taking. All right, very interesting. Ofer, thank you for that. Now, before we move on, here's a bit more about Improvate. Take a look. Like breathing, connectivity is a basic human need. That's exactly why the UN has declared internet connection a basic human right. Especially in times like these, connection is what makes us grow. It gives us meaning and lets us be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Part of a nation. Spacecom is proud to be a part of the effort to empower African nations to connect and very proud to present Digital Community Platform, or DCP, a practical and sustainable solution to your country's digital transformation plans, including remote and less accessible regions. Combining connectivity, Wi-Fi, local cloud, content, and OTT in a simple and innovative way. Using Spacecom's brand new and advanced satellite AMA-17, specifically designed for Africa's needs, DCP provides a turnkey solution, which enables a complete arsenal of services. Government services, health, education, commerce and payments, agriculture, and of course, home use and entertainment. DCP, Digital Community Platform. Scalable, sustainable, flexible. Available now 
for rapid deployment. Don't forget, Improvade is about making practical changes, exposing Israeli tech innovators to governments and companies around the world to promote businesses whose goal is innovation and helping countries further their development. The exposure right here at this conference is a first step followed up with delegations and real business connections. Now, before we end this conference, I'd like to welcome again Dan Zajcek, CEO of Spacecom. Dan, thank you for returning to speak to us once again. Thank you, Lauren. So Communication uh, Africa 2021 was a very exciting event. Africa is ready to continue its advancements in the field of communication. And we all concluded today that it is the right timing and moment to introduce new innovative solutions. Spacecom is enabling countries to take over the African opportunity with its advanced satellite and digital community platform, the DCP. As the CEO of the company, no doubt you are excited regarding the future. How would you like to conclude this day? I think that we had an excellent day. I think that, uh, as we saw, we covered uh, three, 360 degrees with the uh, different stakeholders. We saw the government perspective, the regulators, uh, the suppliers, and also the users themselves. Um, we understand that uh, the challenge across Africa is uh, real and uh, provides a, a huge opportunity for companies in the tech, in the communication, but the most important is to bring something that will be scalable for first deployment to have the impact. And now it's accelerating due to the pandemic. So time to market is really uh, an important issue. And for us, the solution that we introduced, the DCP, is covering this uh, entire needs. And uh, it's uh, very flexible. It's very um, dedicated and very focused for the needs of the governments and for the nations and the people themselves. I think that uh, it's, it was a great day and we are very excited to do this uh, implementation and to have a real impact over the African community. Great. Thank you, Dan. And thank you to all the guests on our panel today in studio and, of course, joining us from abroad on Zoom. That's it from Improvates and Spacecom's Communication Africa 2021 conference. We've heard today from the Honorable Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, dis distinguished ministers and ambassadors from Mali, South Sudan, Gabon Libreville, Ghana, the Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, and Sierra Leone, and from our partners in this conference, Spacecom. We also want to thank NationSat, Ignite, and Bank Laumi. Improvate is all about access and connections, exposing Israeli tech leaders to governments and companies around the world to promote businesses whose goal is innovation. The exposure right here at this conference is a first step. The next step, delegations and real business connections. We want to thank you all for taking part and hope this is just the start of doing business together, making technology accessible to all and improving the lives of people across the world. Keep an eye out for Improvate's next conference, CyberSec presenting cutting-edge Israeli cyber technologies to the Gulf on February 11th. I'm Lauren Izzo. Thank you so much for joining us today. And that is all we have. Where am I sitting in a tin?